Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome to another how-to tutorial. This one I will say is not going to be quite as quick as the others and we're actually going to be doing this one on the server in our survival world and that's due to the fact that I already have everything set up, it's ready to go and we have a nice area to do this. So we're going to be covering the Between Lands Alchemy system from start to finish. Um, it's just one comprehensive tutorial so that if you have any questions Hopefully they'll all be answered here. So before you start the Between Lands Alchemy System, there is three things that I suggest that you make uh, for starters, and that is first up the Herblor book. Um, this is pretty much your Herblor book. <laughs> and right here you have four different tabs. You have a list of aspects, and you can scroll through right here. And this just tells you the different aspects, what they represent, and if you click on them, you can see anything that you've researched that that aspect is found in, as well as what kind of infusions that aspect is used to create. Uh, you have a list of ingredients here. This tells you all the different ingredients in the Between Lands. There's actually just enough ingredients that it fills up a double chest, if you want, say, all of them. And any ingredients that you've already researched, not fully researched, but just researched even just once, are going to be grayed out, whereas anything that you have not researched um, is a darker, a darker gray. So uh, you can see I've researched everything but two things. We're going to be researching one of them in this tutorial and one um, to pop the advancement in the next uh, LP episode. Then you have your aspect info. This tells you just about the, in the aspects. This is what we clicked on that brought us from the aspect list. So um, it tells you details about it and everything. And then you have ingredient info. And this tells you any ingredients that you have researched at least once, they're going to get an entry filled in here that's going to tell you a bit about it, um, generally where to commonly find it. You can see large patches of algae can be found quite commonly in any biome on the surface of the water. And it tells you what, re, uh, what aspects you have found within this. If you have not researched all of them, which we'll get into that in just a second, if you have not researched all of them, it's not going to show you all of them, just the ones that you've found thus far. Now, in addition, there is a little tab here that you can click, and this tells you all the different infusion uh, potions within the mod, within the alchemy. And you can click on any of these. You can scroll through if you want and read about them and uh, whatnot, or you can just click here and it'll take you right to it. Um, and it'll tell you what it does, how to boost it, and the stuff that it contains in order to make it. And then next up, you need to make a net. Um, we'll be using that to catch geckos. And then you need to make yourself a sickle. Now this does require generally um, I don't normally go over recipes because, you know, packs change them and everything, and everybody plays with JEI or NEI. But generally, you are going to have to get into mining and find Valonite, which is pretty much the diamond um, equivalent of the Between Lands. So that may be the last thing that you get, but uh, you do need all three of these things, ideally, to start alchemy. Okay, now in the Between Lands, once you have your sickle, your net, your herblore book, what we're going to do with the sickle, we're going to go out and find plants. Now, certain plants don't require the sickle to be gathered. For example, flathead mushrooms. These are one that you can actually just right, just left-click and break them. Um, but in the case of the swamp plant, if you left-click the swamp plant, you'll notice that we get a leaf. Now, if you were to shear that, you would get the swamp plant. But using the sickle, you gather basically the important parts of the plant. Um, black hat mushrooms are another one that you can just left-click to break that's used in alchemy. And then there's also like moss. You know, you can left click, you do have to break that one. And you'll notice I didn't get anything that time. That's because there is a chance that you're going to fail um, whenever you, you break something. So maybe you don't actually gather uh, the part of the plant that you want. Okay, so there I got moss. Okay, so just bear in mind that there is a chance that it is going to fail. And there is a huge variety. Like I said, I think there's what, 52 uh, plants within the Between Lands for you to gather from. Not every single plant has um, an alchemy based ingredient but most of them do. And a good rule of thumb, if you gather something and you want to know if it can be used, just look at it in any eye, use U on it. And if it has a pestle and mortar recipe, chances are um, it's probably an alchemy ingredient. Anything that has ground, um, so if we type in ground, you can see all this different stuff. This is all used for alchemy. Okay, and then as far as the net goes, and I tried to turn off this rain and I can't in the between lands, it won't let me. Um, but that little orange creature right up there, that's what we want the net for. That's a gecko. Now, whenever I start getting close to it, even if I sneak, you'll notice that it takes off running and it dives into the weedwood bush. 
So what you're going to do is just kind of watch it and then find the weed wood bush that it went into, break it, and then right click to capture it. So you can see I just caught a gecko. And the reason we want the gecko is because we're going to be doing some testing, doing some research on that gecko to see how he reacts to different ingredients so that we know what kind of aspects are within them. And I would suggest that you go ahead and gather up a few plants. Um, having a specific backpack for holding those is nice. Um, also, geckos, I would suggest you capture as many of those as you can. Um, going through the research, I mean, I'm just about done with research and I have went through probably 15 geckos. Because whenever you test stuff on them, they can die from the research. And basically they just vanish from the cage and you have to replenish it. So just a heads up. But now back in the overworld, what we're going to do, or in the between lands, wherever your alchemy stuff's going to be set up in, um, the next thing that we're going to want to craft is a mortar and pestle. And the mortar just goes down, you know, it's a block. The pestle is like an item, and then you can just right click it and it goes into there. And if you want to pull it out, uh, you can do that right there. Um, it, and you can see it has a percentage remaining. It does have a durability. So you can see this one I can use 73 more times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our items and if you just have one mortar that's fine um, but having multiples is nice and then what you can do whenever you put your item in there you can left click and it's going to break it down and you can see that we got ground black hat mushroom um, and then of course the leaves will be ground leaves and then I'm going to be crushing up broom's edge because none of that stuff that we gathered I can actually research because I've already completed the research for all of these items and I would suggest before you start researching go ahead and grind yourself up like three, four, five, something like that. Um, that way you can knock out all the research at once and you know for a fact that you've found all the aspects. Because what happens is if you don't, let's say, because it does get consumed, if you only grind up, say, one Broom's Edge, well, chances are Broom's Edge probably has at least three aspects within it. A three is about the average. Um, some are only going to have one aspect. Some of them have five aspects. You know, it really just depends. And I usually like to have one as a placeholder. You can see I've got the Immersive Craft shelves holding all the different ingredients because these are nice because you can hold shift on them and you can see the amount that you have. Um, I also have some in a chest here and I'll go over why that is in just a second. But anyways, once you have your stuff ground up, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to craft yourself a cage for your gecko. And then what we'll do is we'll put our cage down and then we can just right click our gecko into that cage. And you can see he's now sitting inside of our cage. And then what we're going to do is let's grab our ground broom's edge or whatever herb that you're going to be researching. And we are going to right click this gecko. You can see it says this item still seems to have some more undiscovered aspects. I actually have chat turned off right now. Okay, I turned chat on. And if I right click this here, it says the gecko is still recovering from the last experience. That's experiment. That's because the geckos have basically a cooldown timer after you test something on them that they have to kind of recover from that effect. So we're going to have to give him a little while. That's why I suggest you make a few cages. I did my research with three. Um, you can make more, but three is kind of an ideal number, I think. So let's right click this. You can see it, says, it still says this item still seems to have some undiscovered aspects. And it says the gecko is chewing furiously on its tail and looks around as if possessed. Right here, in fact, let me build up. If we look inside there, you can actually see the gecko has changed colors. He's like a purple. And he has red eyes and he's trying to chew his tail. It's going to visually show you um, what's happening to the gecko. But it's also going to tell you in your chat as well. Um, but we still have more aspects. So we're going to use this on another gecko. And it says this seems to be the last undiscovered aspect on this item. That means we have researched everything that is within, within Ground Broom's Edge. So we don't have to research that anymore. If I was to come over to this gecko that's not on cooldown says you've already discovered all aspects on this item. It's not going to consume the item. You can't use it on him because you now know everything about Ground Broom's Edge. Now, one thing to note, you can actually hold shift on this and it's going to tell you there's the three aspects that we have within this item. There's Selowin, Aswin, Byeris. And you can see the values. Selowin, there's 1.06. Aswin, there's 0.28. Byeris, there's 0.19. And I've actually got all my ingredients alphabetized right here, so... That's what this is for and for holding the amount. But in this chest, I'm keeping one of every ingredient. And that is so that I can go through here. If I'm looking for, say, Aswin, I can just go through here and see the values of everything while holding shift and see how much of each aspect is within those different items. So I can kind of pick and choose what my best option is 
Um, and then I can cross-reference this and say, uh, for example, if I'm wanting Aswin, um, cave grass is a great source of Aswin. It has 1.17. There are a couple better ones, but cave grass is really common to find within the Between Lands. So I can look here and I can say, okay, I'd really like to use cave grass for that. And then I can come over here and I can cross-reference and I can see, okay, I've got 16 cave grass. Having this stuff alphabetized is really nice, in my opinion, because you can easily find uh, what you're looking for. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to keep doing some research until you find a decent basically spread of aspects. You know where to find different aspects. There's 13 aspects within uh, the Between Lands Alchemy. And I've got all, I've got a bottle laid out with each, each of these. Now I will suggest that you have some way of storing these bottles once they fill up because the bottles, each of them can only hold five of an aspect. And we'll get into all that in just a second. But I will suggest you go ahead and set up a place to store excess because when it comes to making potions, you're going to ideally use more than one potion or more than one bottle of this stuff. So go ahead and set yourself up a nice little area to store this stuff. And so now that we've done the research, we've we've gone through that whole process and we know where to find these aspects. We know uh, you don't have to necessarily research all of the ingredients because you're going to be using the aspects and not the ingredients themselves necessarily. So just knowing what, knowing where to get each of the aspects of the potions that you're wanting to make. That's the main thing that you need to know. Okay, so we are going to take a look at a potion and I would like to make the Swift Arm Brew. And you could see it tells all about it. Uh, and it says that it requires, let's look first here. We're gonna cover some more of this stuff in a minute, but it requires Aswin, Dayunus, Unigaz, and Ordanus. Those are the four aspects that it requires. And so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go through and find yourself those different aspects on the items that you have researched. Okay, so I've got four ingredients here. One has Unigaz, then we have uh, Ordanus on this one, Dayunus on this one, and Aswin on this one. And you can see I've got like Yeowen, I've got Bayeris, I've got Fergalaz, um, and more Yeowen and Bayeris that the recipe doesn't actually call for. And it's kind of just overflow for this recipe. That's fine, that's why we're doing this middle step. Okay, so now what we need to do, now that we know what we want to make, um, we've got our ingredients pinpointed, we're ready to actually start the infusion process, start working towards making our first brews, our first infusions. We need to craft the infuser, and then we also need to get ourselves an octane ingot, and moss, cave moss, any kind of moss um, based between lands. And it can be the block form, or it can be the ground up form, um, any of that. You can even throw it down as an item if you want to. Um, and then we're going to need to get ourselves some peat from the Between Lands. This stuff is really, really common. You could find it in like the marshy areas, um, usually spawning in fairly large patches. So it's not, it's not very any, it's not very uncommon to say the least. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place our moss down or throw our moss items down, whatever, and then take our octane ingot and just hold right click. And there we go. We now have fire. Um, because this infuser is going to need to boil the water uh, for it to actually start the brewing process. And then what we'll do is we'll place down our infuser right above the flames. And now we're ready to start making infusions. Start working towards infusions. So the next thing that we're going to need is some swamp water. And I've got a little infinite source here. Um, and then I've also got stored in here just for convenience sake. But and we're going to right click it in there. Now I will suggest that you go ahead and fill this thing up. It can hold up to three buckets. Technically you don't have to do all three buckets. You can just do one bucket if you want. But if you do that you're going to be wasting. Because this stuff, if you do three buckets, it's basically going to triple your output. So there's really not any reason at all to ever do one bucket. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to take our ingredients and we're just going to right click these into our infuser. And now we have to wait for the water to boil. Um, it does take a second for the water to start boiling, and it's based on, um, you know, how much water is in here. So one bucket is going to boil faster than three buckets. We're going to start seeing bubbles. That means we're getting really, really close to it starting. There we go. It's starting to boil now. You can see smoke particles and bubbles and stuff coming up out of this, and you can hear it boiling now. And so what happens is... Right after it starts boiling, we're going to see these white smoke particles. That means we can pull this stuff out anytime we want. So it's ready to go. Um, 
Now, if you're making infusions, it's going to take a lot longer. But since we're not making infusions, we just want basically the raw aspects out of these ingredients. We can pull these out at any time. Now, if you right-click this, you're going to see that it stirs. This isn't that important for just breaking down aspects. But once we start getting into um, actually doing infusions, you do need to keep this thing stirred. Um, it's only You only have to stir it about once every 30 seconds. Um, but what happens is if you don't stir it, once it hits the boiling point... If you don't start at least once every 30 seconds, um, then it's going to start evaporating one bucket at a time. And anytime that it evaporates, when you're doing an actual infusion, um, there's a fairly good chance that you're going to have a shallow breath spawn, which is one of those big, um, basically smog beasts, like the little floating like smog that comes after you um, in the between lands. You're going to have one of those mobs spawn. They give you poison. They're not a whole lot of fun to deal with. So it's better if you keep this stirred. Not to mention you're going to start losing buckets of liquid, buckets of your infusion if you don't keep it stirred. So since this is done, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our buckets. You can use Simorite buckets or Weedwood buckets. Either one works fine. And just shift and right click this. And we're going to do three buckets because we added in three buckets. And you can see I got three Simorite infusion buckets. It says infusion time in zero. That's because we're not doing an infusion. We just want the raw aspects out of this. And you can see the, the ingredients that we use listed there. So I used cave grass, ultra snail shell, thorns, and mire coral. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to craft ourselves some alembics. I do suggest you make a few of these. I've got three because that way I can run three buckets from the infuser at a time. You can make more, you can make less. Um, but I, honestly, at least three is ideal. I may end up adding more if I find myself needing it. But this is enough that I can run an entire infuser process at once and then what we're going to do is we're just going to take our buckets and we're just going to right click the liquid in there and you can see um, our purple liquid is in there and it's going to start basically getting filtered and put into this bottle off to the side there and it will visually represent how close this is to being done so right now it's a long way from being done it's going to take about two or three minutes for this stuff to break down um, but as that time goes the liquid in here is going to slowly drop and the liquid in here is going to slowly go up. And while that's running, I will suggest that you make yourselves some green dendrothist vials. Dendrothist, I've covered it in the Let's Play. You can find this on the large weedwood trees. They're very noticeable. They are massive. Um, you can also find it in the stumps where the tree has been cut down and there's just a stump there and it's filled with like fungus that's uh, kind of like set in. You can find dendrothist in the stump or the tree itself. Um, green dendrothist is fairly common. There is also orange dendrothist. And we're going to go over the reason, the use for the orange dendrothist. This stuff is very, very rare. I found, I um, mean, this world, I have found over a stack of green dendrothist. And I have found like five orange dendrothist. Okay, so this one here is just about to stop. You can see the purple liquid down there at the bottom um, has dropped considerably. It has taken about three minutes or so. And as soon as it's done, there we go. You can see the smoke particles on it have stopped. The liquid inside of it is gone. Then what we can do is we can take our dendrothus vials, our green dendrothus vials, and then just right-click the Alembic. And it's going to drop the vials on the ground. And you can see it's still got liquid in there. We've got a lot of aspects to clean out. So we're going to get vials with the different aspects in it. So you can see there's... Um, Yeowen, Dayunus, and they've all got values next to them, um, ranging based on, you know, how much of that aspect was present in the brew that we just made, or in the, you know, the aspects that we cooked down. And then what we can do is we can take these vials and we can just shift, right click on the ground and place them down. And then if you want to, you can randomize position with a shift, right click. It's going to kind of move it and randomize it. You can see these are all like all of the plates right now. And what we're going to do is I've got all the aspects laid out. I do suggest you do this just because it's handy. What we can do is this one is Yeowen and this jar right here is Yeowen. So what we can do is we can hold right click and we can dump our Yeowen in there to kind of condense it down. So in order to basically put these into one vial, you have to place them down and then hold right click, which this Bayeris jar just filled up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this right up there on that shelf and I'll place down a new vial. I do suggest that you kind of build these up 
And just as a heads up, if you do reach a point where you're like, okay, I have too much of that aspect, I'm not using it a lot, and you just want to dump it, what you can do is you can take your vial, put it in a crafting grid, and just empty it out. So it is very easy to just dump that stuff. Anyways, now we've got our aspects broken down. You know, the stuff that we need to make that swift arm brew, we have that stuff being broken down. Or broken down. Um, so then what we're going to do is, if we take a look at our Arbler book, we're going to pinpoint the aspects that we want. And this, this is super easy when you have the aspects already broken down and in jars ready to go. So we were wanting the Swift Arm Brew. It requires Aswin, Dayunus, Unigaz, and Ordanus. And it says the Swift Arm Brew enables arm muscles to work to their fullest, increasing one's arm swinging speed, thus allowing them to mine faster, pull back bows more rapidly, and strike foes more easily. A combination of Aswin, Dayunus, Unigaz, and Ordanus aspects is required to make this brew. The more Aswin that's used, this, this right here is the important part, the more Aswin that's used, the stronger are the brew's effects. The more Ordanus is used, the longer the brew lasts. Okay, this is potency. Aswin is potency. Ordanus is duration. And then lastly, adding Bayeris will corrupt the nature of the brew, turning it into the slug arm brew, which decreases one's arm swinging speed. Okay, this is a common trend. Generally, if you have a brew, adding Bayeris to it, which is corruption, it's the aspect of corruption, it will change the nature to be the opposite of what the positive one is. Okay, so if we go back here and we take a look at the slug arm brew, this one right here, this is a negative effect brew. Um, and you can see this requires Aswin, Dayunus, Unigaz, and Ordanus. And then in addition, you're going to have to add Bayeris. It doesn't list it on here, but it does require Bayeris. Most of these point these negative um, things, they don't list Bayeris, but they do require Bayeris. If you go back here, you can see anti-infusions uh, when you scroll through, and that's all negative effect brews. Now, one thing to note, any of the brews in the game, positive or negative, you can hold shift and hold right click, and I'll show you that in just, in just a minute, but you can use it to throw the brew. And positive effects, you know, will boost. You can use them for allies. Um, negative effects, of course, you can use on mobs. Now, they will affect, like if you throw healing brews at mobs, they're going to heal those mobs um, and vice versa. So if we type Swift into any eye, you can see there is the Swift Arm Brew. And it only shows two different variants, but you can have all sorts of variants. It shows a potency of five, duration of one, and a potency of one, duration of five that it lists. Now, one thing to note, the Swift Arm Brew, um, it's not really possible to get a potency five on duration or a duration five just due to the number of ingredients that are present. So it, it lists the potency five, you can get it if you're in creative, but you can't actually craft that just due to the fact that this potion does require a lot of different uh, ingredients. So anyways, we just wanna make the Swift Arm Brew and we're gonna go for a potent version. We're gonna go for a potency, a maxed out potency. We're not gonna worry about duration because even when your duration is one, um, if you look right here, it's still a two minute buff. If your duration is max, it's nine and a half minutes. Um, this varies from potion to potion. Some minutes, or some potions, like if we take a look at healing, take a look at the brews of healing, if your duration is maxed, that's five minutes and 10 seconds, okay? And when it's not, when it's at a one, it's a one minute duration. So any eye kind of gives you an idea on the duration. It's kind of nice for looking that stuff up um, to get an idea, but for the swift arm, it's still going to be a two minute duration um, with maxed out potency. So we're going to go for that. So that means when we're making this, we want to prioritize Aswin. It says the more Aswin that's used, the stronger are the bruise effects. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit of Dayunus, Unigaz, and Ordanus. And what you need to do is these jars that are placed down, um, just go over to them with your green Dentrithus vials and shift right click. And we're going to get a vial here that has some Dayunus. Now you'll notice it's only 0.11. Um, it's basically just enough to kind of mark this jar as Dayunus. And that's actually all you need. If you have an aspect in a recipe, you're not using it to boost that recipe. Because like I said, we're going to be using Aswin to boost the strength of the effect. But the rest of these, Dayunus, Unigaz, Ordanus, the values on those do not matter at all. Okay, so... We're just going to go through, we're going to get ourselves then a little bit of Unigaz and a little bit of uh, Ordanus. 
there we go. So we have 0.11 of these three aspects. And then our Aswin, I've got three field vials here. And we're going to take all three of these. So there's five aspect in each of these Aswin vials. And then only 0.11 in these three. And then what we're going to do is just take our bottles over and we're going to run these through the infuser. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and fill this up with water. Once again, go ahead and put three buckets in there. Um, there's not much reason to do less. And then we're just going to right-click, drop our Unigaz, our Aswin, all three of those, and then that vial. Like I said, the ingredient limit is six for the infuser. Six is the most of anything that you can put in. Okay, so with this, the highest potency that we're going to get, because one rule of thumb is when you start messing with potency and duration, um, let's say, for example, if you take a look at the Elixir of Healing, this only requires Yaowen and Ordanus. Yaowen boosts the strength, Ordanus boosts the duration. Okay, so you're only using two out of the six possible ingredients with that. So then if you were to say you wanted... Um, strength of the elixir. You were to put five Yeowen, one Ordanus, then you're going to get um, a duration of one, a strength of five. Um, once again, with that, value doesn't matter. Even though this modifies like the duration, if you're only wanting the potency, then you don't have to worry about the Ordanus, just get 0.11. And regardless, if you put, say, five aspect into there, you're still only going to get a duration of one. Okay, so when it comes to the potions, and by the way, you can see the, the, smokes are, the smoke is coming out. We're not going to pull this out. We're going to let this set in there, and we're going to let it infuse, because this is actually making a brew for us. So we're going to have to just leave this in until it changes colors, and we're going to get a sound effect. It's going to tell us when it's done. And you need to start this, like I said, about every 30 seconds. I tend to start it way more than every 30 seconds, but that's just because I want to make sure you know, I don't burn it. But when it comes to doing the potency, the duration of your infusions, what you need to look at is how many base ingredients do we have. In this case, we have four base ingredients. So at best, I only have two points to play around with. Now, if I was to put in, say, Swift Arm Brew, if I was to put in um, two bottles of Aswin that were filled and two bottles of Ordanus that were filled, then I would have gotten a potency of two and a duration of two. But what we should get out of this is a duration of one, potency of three. So you'll notice that the liquid is changing colors. It's getting darker. It's becoming a very dark blue. That means just in just a second, it's about to make a sound effect and the liquid color is going to change. Most infusions generally, this isn't, there we go. That's the sound effect. And then we're going to go through with our buckets and just shift right click to pull it out. We do get all of our dentithus vials back. Okay. And you're going to see here, we have Simarite Infusion Buckets that have Unigaz, 0.11, three times Aswin at 5 value, and then Ordanus and Dayunus at 0.11. And you can see Infusion Time now says a minute and 33 seconds. Most infusions are going to take about a minute and a half. Um, you want to make sure and pull it out when that happens, exactly roughly when that happens. Because what the way this works is if you were to pull out the potion before, let's say you started putting buckets, you know, pulling the liquid out before it did that sound effect, before the liquid changed colors, then you're not going to have a well-brewed potion. Um, if you, and you're just going to get like aspects back, you know, after you run it through the Alembic. And then if you wait too long, which is about 15 seconds, 20 seconds after the sound effect first goes off, if you wait too long, then what's going to happen is it's going to burn and you're just going to get some aspects back and you're not going to get back everything that you put in. So it's imperative that you pull it out, you know, you're there for whenever it goes off and you pull it out um, about the, you know, roughly about the same time that it does that sound effect and it changes colors. And the color that it changes is based entirely on the brew that you make because the Swift Arm Brew, uh, if you look inside that bottle there, it's kind of a, it's kind of a brownish, yellowish, basically like the liquid that we just pulled out of that infuser. But so basically whenever you're making these brews though, like I said, look at how many ingredients they take. Because of course you're, li you're limited to six ingredients in the infuser at a time. Um, or six aspect vials or whatever. So you're not always going to be able to max out potency or max out duration. Uh, 
It's kind of pick and choose. So, for example, say Nimble Fate, it uses Unigaz, Ordanus, and Aswin. So you have three additional slots. So you could boost this to, say, a potency of four, or you could make duration of four, or you could do um, a potency of three and a duration of two. You know, you can kind of just mix and match however um, you want for whatever situation that you're going to be using the potion for. So, you know, maybe if it's a boss fight and you're making like a swift arm brew or a strength draught or something like that, two minutes is generally fine, I think. You know, if you take a look at the strength draught, at a duration of one, it's two minutes. The swift arm brew, once again, two minutes. Uh, both of those really good for boss fights. So I would suggest that you stack, you know, the potency uh, for something like that and make the effect stronger. You know, make it so that with like the swift arm brew, you're going to be hitting faster. With the strength bro, you're going to be dealing more damage because duration is not quite as important because the boss fight, chances are, is going to be over in two minutes. But for something like, you know, if I was making swift arm brew for mining, that would be a different story. Maybe I'd want duration um, over potency just so that it lasts for like a longer period of time. Um, or if you want to mine fast, then once again, potency is better. Um, one, one example of this is if you're going through the maze in the Twilight Forest, um, you know, that stuff is, it takes forever to break that. Um, but if you couple the Between Lands, the Swift Pick, with a Brew of Swift Arm at max potency that you can create, you're going to be breaking that stone way faster. Like, we're talking like, you know, just a couple seconds as opposed to like 30 seconds to break, you know, a piece of stone. So depending on the situation, you may want to prioritize the duration or prioritize the potency. So it's really just up to you how you want to do that. I will say that if you're making, I think, a, probably a common potion that you're going to be making a lot of is Elixir of Healing. And the Elixir of Healing works like a regem. Um, if you take a look here, and it only uses two ingredients, so you can max out potency. You can max out uh, duration if you so desire. But if you take a look here, um, it's a one-minute duration if you have duration set to one. It's a duration of five minutes and 10 seconds if you have duration set to five. Now, what I would suggest, the potion that I prefer with the Elixir of Healing, which I, like I said, I think this is gonna be a common one that you make. Um, I will say the feasting and the ripening both require three ingredients, so you'll have to drop one of these. But for the Elixir of Healing, which I thought, like I said, I think that's the most common one that you're probably gonna be making. Going for duration of three, potency of three, is awesome because it gives you um, I can't remember it's like three minutes and something of a duration and it's enough regeneration that you can literally with no armor on difficulty set to hard mode you can sit in lava and you'll be at full health the whole time like it's that powerful um, so having that extra duration and just enough potency to you know maximize the effect of what you need um, is ideal I think Okay, so our Olympics have stopped running, and this is actually an infusion that's in here this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Dendrithus Vials, and we are just going to right-click this, and we're going to pull our potions out. Now you can see that each Olympic is making four of these potions, and you can see it's a potency of three, duration of one. So we have two minutes, one second of potency three swift arm. Okay, and we have a lot of servings of this. And that kind of worked out fairly well because I had just enough vials for to empty all the Olympics out. But you can see that one single craft gave me 12 Swift Arm Brews. That is awesome because that is a lot of Swift Arm Brew. And one thing I want to show you real quick, you can drink this. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i show you in a second what the effects are. But if you hold shift with any kind of potion, any kind of potion that's added uh, with the Between Lands, you can hold shift and then hold right click. And you can see it's going to start charging up. Now, it works kind of like, uh, you know, like a bow, for example. Um, it pretty much has the same effect as a bow. So the longer you hold it down, you can see I just threw that potion, and it's a splash potion. The longer you hold it down, the farther that you're going to throw it. So, just a heads up. I know I just wasted that one, and you don't get your Dentrithus vial back when you use it as a splash potion. So it's not awesome, <laughs> but you can use it for that. Okay, now let's go Let's go check this out real quick. So Swift Arm Brew, you can actually see what all the brews do right here. Um, but Swift Arm Brew is going to reduce the cooldown time when you're using a melee weapon. It's also going to increase the speed that you pull the bow back, and it's also going to cause you to mine faster. Okay, so if I take my Stonebone Hammer and break this, and you can see 
it's not terribly slow, but I mean, this is just a cobblestone hammer with no modifiers. Now, if we were to pop the swift arm brew, you can see it's a bit faster. Um, and this is going to be true, like I said, with the bows and as well as, you know, with melee weapons and stuff like that. And then if we use, say, the AIOT, you know, it's pretty quick mining. And this will work with uh, not just mining, but also like, you know, cutting down wood, anything like that. It's going to make it a bit faster to use your tools, also to use your weapons. Now, one thing to note, anytime that you drink a potion out of a green dendrothus vial, you're going to get back this dirty dent dendrothus vial. And so what you have to do is you have to run this thing through the purifier. Now, with a little bit of swamp water, a little bit of sulfur. So our purifier, we can just drop our dirty dendrothus vial in there. We've got some liquid some sulfur and it's going to purify um, that dendrothus vial and clean it out so that we can use it again. Because while it's dirty, you can't put any more infusions into it and you also can't put any aspects into it um, until it's cleaned. Now one thing to note though is the orange dendrothus vial. If you recall, I said there was a difference between the orange and the green. The orange one never gets dirty. So you can drink potions out of it however many times you want. Um, it does consume the potion. I mean, you're still going to have to make the potion again, refill it, but it, you're never going to have to purify it after making it. Um, so it is it is kind of nice, like, long-term, as you get the orange dentrothus to upgrade all of your infusion-carrying vials to orange. Now, there's really no benefit to having your, your aspects stored in orange. You can store them in the orange dentrothus vial, but unless you're just, like, setting on loads of orange dentrothus, it's kind of a waste to do that. But just a couple things that I want to cover real quick. In the case of both the Mortar and Pestle and the Infuser, um, I think one of these, yeah, see, I've got some Broom's Edge leaves in here. You can take the Life Crystal and you can shift right click. I'm sorry, right click. And it's going to add it to that item. And you can see the Life Crystal is actually floating above that Mortar and Pestle right there. And it's going to automatically break down anything that I give it. So, for example, if I toss some Tangled Root in there, it's going to go ahead and it's going to crush that stuff up. So if you have a lot of life crystal, you can see it's slowly draining energy off of that life crystal at about 1% per operation. But if you have a lot of life crystals or you have a lot of white hearts, you can do that to kind of alleviate, um, you know, the manual aspect of this. In addition, that life crystal can be used on the infuser in the same method. And what it's going to do, which I feel like it's a little bit more wasteful for the infuser because... I don't know, I stand by my infuser when it's cooking because I want to make sure and pull the, the infusions out as soon as they finish to make sure I don't, you know, burn them. But if you put the crystal on the infuser, every 30 seconds it's going to stir the infuser, so it's not going to ever evaporate when you have the life crystal. But it does take, um, I, want to, I want to say it's like 4% per, it doesn't drain it until the infusion is done, um, but I want to say it takes like 4% per infusion. To keep it stirred but really i mean it's not that bad once you have a lot of life crystals and you you know you got a surplus of them adding them to your mortar and pestles adding them to your infuser it's not bad especially if you have some kind of uh, white auto kill system you know okay i went ahead and popped into a test world for this part because i haven't covered i haven't done any of the farming on in the let's play series so i figured it'd be better if we just did it here i'm gonna cover that in the let's play series but um swamp dirt we can just take between lands shovel this is basic farming mechanics which i'm not covering in this episode but dug swamp dart or dug purified swamp dart or any of that um, and then what we can do is we can take and put our compost on there so we've got a composted swamp dart dug swamp dart and then we can plant well we have to put rubber tree fences right there and it's better to go three high because it's the max growth height for the a spectrus plant and then we can just right click to plant that down. Now it's not going to grow by itself until we do something. And that is we need to take a vial of any kind of aspect that we want to grow on this plant. We need to take a vial of it and ideally make sure that the vial is filled at five because how much is in the vial is very important for the strength of the A. Spectrus plant. So then what we'll do is we'll just right click the A. Spectrus plant with that vial and now it's ready to grow. So if I was to use the ground dried swamp reed, swamp reed um, which is basically like the bone meal of the between lands, you can see that this plant's going to start growing and it's going to start like growing vials, what looks like vials 
of aspects and the color is going to be dependent on what kind of aspect that you put into this. So I put Unigas, so it's kind of like that greenish color. And once this thing grows, we want it to grow all the way up to the top rubber tree plank or rubber tree fence. It has to be rubber tree fences, none of the others work. That's why if you're playing SevTech um, and you have access to it or your server admin will, or whatever will do it for you, um, I would suggest just throw away some rubber tree wood and cheat yourself in those fences because um, at least until the pack is fixed, fixed, those are not craftable. Okay, so once this is grown, then what we can do, just pop in survival, we can go up, we can left click to break that, and look at that. We got a bunch of, make sure I pick all these up. So we got eight a Spectrus fruit and three seeds. You're always going to get back, you know, a seed for every block broken, um, and then you're going to get back a random amount of the plants. Um, generally, it's like six to eight. Um, that you're going to get back. Now you'll notice that this a Spectrus fruit has Unigaz of 2.5. It is half the value of the seed that was planted, um, is what the fruit is. And then you have the seeds that are going to be 0.17 weaker than, you know, whatever planted them. In this case, we use the vial to plant the, um, the plant. But the second time that we plant this, if we want to plant this Unigaz, we can just right click it on there. Um, we don't actually have to use any of the, you know, anything out of the vial. The vial is basically just to jump start it. And then if we were to grow this plant out, it already knows it's growing Unigaz. And the fruit, you basically just throw that in the infuser. Now these seeds, you can also, if you don't want to grow it, you can just throw these in the infuser. But I do suggest, like, early on, like right now, um, I do suggest to grow it because you're going to get more output out of it. Okay, so this is our second generation plant. If we left click to break it, um, let's see, we got five fruit that time and four seeds. Okay, um, you could say that this time it's 4.64 on the seeds. So each time it's going to drop um, just a little bit. It's basically going to decay over time. Um, and then you can see the fruit is 2.42 because it's going to be half of this seed. And it does round up. So in this case, you know, it's 4.83, well, it rounded that half up and just made it a 2.42, so uh, just a heads up on why that is, but it's going to, the fruit's going to be half of what planted it, so in this case, you know, we used a vial that had five unigas in it. It doesn't consume the vial, but it will consume all the aspect within the vial, and that sets the seed to where it is, so I do suggest, if you're going to do this, use a full bottle, um, because it's going to make a stronger lineage um, and give you more time before that lineage pretty much dies out. So, but yeah, it's always going to be, the fruit's always going to be half of what was planted, what was used to plant it, and then the seeds are just going to slowly decay. Uh, they do last for a while, though, and it's a lot, it's a lot of that aspect that you're going to get, because bear in mind that when we broke that first one, we got three seeds, well, then we can plant all three of those seeds, and, you know, just in one case out of those three seeds, we got four more seeds, and more fruit so I mean you could make a huge farm of like an aspect and it all stems from one a spectra seed and they're fairly common in the between lands and they're gonna pretty much set you on any given aspect so anyways I hope you found the video helpful I know it was a little bit longer than um, you know our standard tutorials but I mean between lands alchemy and there's a lot to cover and I know a lot of people are having issues understanding the mechanics of it because it is involved it's a lot different than say the vanilla um, alchemy system um, but it is a lot more powerful at the same time because those brews get very, very strong. We, we just crafted 12 brews with a single craft and all of those give us, you know, that speed boost. And then you stack that with damage and you stack that with healing. It makes you really OP, you know, fighting bosses and stuff like that because that regen can get powerful enough that nothing's going to be able to kill you. <laughs> it's so powerful, especially if you go for like... Potency, honestly, Potency 3 is perfectly good for, I think, pretty much any situation. Um, but you could go all the way up to Potency 5 if you so desired with a duration of a minute and, you know, maybe take like two or three of those into a boss fight. There's no way that thing's going to kill you. You can just get up there and just start beating on it and then you're going to kill it. You know, it is a very powerful alchemy system and it does make quite a few potions. You know, it's a lot more time consuming to make a, a potion craft. But it makes a lot more potions than, say, the vanilla uh, system. So, and it's very, very cheap when when everything boils down. Um, 
those ingredients aren't hard to get or farm from the between lands so um, but anyways i hope it helped i hope it interested you guys in the between lands or in the between lands alchemy system um, honestly probably one of my favorite mechanics ever it's so well done it's it's excellent so anyways if you guys enjoyed the video as always be sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out if you guys have any questions or anything leave them down in the comments and i'll do my best to get those answered for you and i hope to see you guys next time